Welcome to the 2023 Secret Lab Iceberg. I'll be covering every entry on this iceberg made by Shadeboy444 on Reddit. Big shout out to them for making the iceberg, but also for explaining a few of the more obscure entries. On the top left side of the screen for every entry, you'll see 1 to 3 SCP logos. They refer to how sure I am about the entry. 3 means I'm 100% sure, 2 means I'm unsure, and 1 means I have no clue. If you have any info on the entries that I'm not sure about, leave it in the comments. Anyways, let's get into it. Hubert Moszka is the original Polish developer behind the game. Overall, he's pretty active in the Secret Lab community, appearing in events with YouTubers and such. He also streamed almost the entire development of the game in the early days, and still does to this day. SCP Contain Breach is the most popular SCP game ever made. It was the foundation for all SCP games to come after. It was released in 2012 by Jonas Rikonen of Undertow Games, and it still holds up amazingly today. Secret Lab is based on the game and takes massive inspiration from it. Early on, most of Secret Lab's assets were from Containment Breach, but now the team are trying to stray away from it. Northwood Studio was founded in 2017 by the original creator Hubert. It consists of hundreds of employees, a lot of which are volunteers working on the game online, using apps like Discord to communicate. Northwood themselves have been in some drama recently that I'll get into later. CASI, or Central Autonomic Service System for Internal Emergencies, is the voice you hear on the PA system in the game. Most often heard in decontamination, MTF spawn waves, recontaining SCPs, etc. CASI is in fact not text-to-speech generated. All the words spoken in the game were recorded by a human and can be compiled into sentences. This obviously limits what CASI can say, since server admins can give CASI announcements to say over the intercom. Site 02 is the fictitious facility that the game takes place in. Canonically, if you could even say that, Site 02 does not exist, meaning it is not featured on the official SCP wiki outside of Secret Lab. Most of the SCPs featured in game are actually stored in Site 19, which is where Containment Breach takes place. Pink candy is a type of candy that you can get from SCP-330 in the candy room. By default, in vanilla servers, it's disabled, but a lot of modded servers enable it for players. When the player consumes pink candy, they explode, killing anyone or dealing damage around them. It is made for some of the best trolling of the entire game, and it has a cult-like following in the community. This entry refers to the main theme of Seeker Lab, called the Final Flash of Existence. It's the song used for Light Containment Zone Decontamination, and it's become really popular as the game has gained more popularity. It was composed by Jacek Fragi Krogal, who made all the music for the game, some of which is unused or removed, which we'll get into later. The filmmaker role is a new player class added in the Refracted Reality update. As far as I know, it allows players to more easily record scenes, take screenshots, and overall allows for a lot more cinematic and storytelling than just no clipping as a tutorial class, which is always a welcome addition. The century is referring to SCP-207, the cola, and the anti-cola, or Pepsi as it's been dubbed. When consumed, the cola slowly drains your health but gives you a massive speed boost which can be stacked. The Pepsi is the exact opposite. It slows you down but makes you survive things that would otherwise kill you. Combining these two together ends quite... spectacularly. SCP-956, also known as the Piñata, appeared briefly in the game during the last year's anniversary event. It would spawn near players who ate SCP-559, a cake that turns you into a child, with the higher pitch and everything. If a child got too close to the Piñata, the player would freeze and it would slowly creep towards you and finally kill you. I never got to experience this myself, but my good friend Starstalker made a short about it that absolutely blew up, so I'm going to be using his footage for this part. This entry refers to the two pieces of art found at the end of the D-Class cells. These were made by the two Seeker Lab art contest winners in 2018, one depicting 106 and the other 049. I'm not too sure what this is referring to. A few years ago, 079 had an intro sequence that would display it exiting hibernation mode after you spawned in. I'm assuming this is what the entry is referring to, unless there is an even older intro that I'm not aware of. 
Before the updates as we know them today, Secret Lab used to get massive updates fittingly called Mega Patches. However, after the first two, Northwood decided to do away with the style of updating, and instead decided to do updates that were more targeted to one mechanic, like Parabellum and the changing of gunplay. This entry refers to the blue candy during the 2021 Halloween event. Normally, when consumed, it gives you some AHP. But during Halloween, you would turn into this big marshmallow creature and it could melee people and beat them to death. It was honestly pretty funny and I really hope they bring it back. Here's what Northwood themselves have said about pairs. Pairs are experimental testing sessions offered to Patreon supporters on at least a monthly basis. These testing sessions allow our development team to experiment with many things, from simple balance changes to more complex overhauls. So there you have it. They're just Patreon exclusive early testing sessions. The QR code on the key cards is actually scannable and reveals binary code which translates to Secure, Contain, Protect, the motto of the SCP Foundation. Double Jump was a recently patched bug that allowed players to jump much higher if they caused the game to lag. This could be done by changing your mic or by alt tabbing. Players quickly abused this and got to places they weren't meant to get to. Admittedly, people found this bug super annoying, but personally it was really fun to mess around with. SCP 012's containment chamber used to be in the game before the 11.1.0 update in December of 2021. It was replaced by today's TC01 room, which contains the Candy Bowl SCP. There also used to be a bug where you'd be able to trap SCPs in the metal frame in the middle of the room, which was really fun. There also used to be a bug where if 079 looked at the 012 camera, they'd get stuck there and couldn't move for the rest of the game. This entry refers to the new human models Northwood showed a while back. Supposedly, we're going to be getting these new models in an upcoming human class rework update. Honestly, I think they look pretty good, even if the MTF do look a lot like the Combine from Half-Life. April Fools has a long history in Seeker Lab. Usually, every April 1st, the game would be updated to feature quirky changes and add memes and such, like the infamous Mr. Nut or Evil 999. Unfortunately, like most good things, Northwood has slowly stopped updating the game for April Fools, most likely to be focused on the content updates. The Jailbird is the only melee weapon in Secret Lab. It has two types of attacks, one being a short melee swing and one being a charge attack. If the weapon gets damaged enough, it'll turn red and explode on the next use. When using it, you can hear a distorted robotic voice speaking. Some of it has been decoded, but most of it is still pretty much up to speculation as to what it says. Have a listen. The COM-45 is a secret weapon that can be obtained by putting a COM-15 and Knife 14 on very fine. It looks like three COM-15s melted together and fires all three pistols at once with an insane rate of fire, but also insane recoil. Overall, the gun is super fun to use. The idea came to be when someone on the SL Steam community forums asked the devs to add a COM-45, referring to the caliber of the ammo we use of course. But the devs decided to have some fun with it. The Furbison was a controversial figure in recent Secret Lab history. On May 25th, 2023, he uploaded a video titled, SCPSL has a huge problem and it's not even close to being fixed, in which he talked about the issues he had with Secret Lab, but also with Northwood Studio. The video didn't get that much hate, but it did spark interest in his channel. A month later, on June 26th, he would upload a video titled, Northwood is worse than I thought. In the video, he talks about allegations of grooming, underpaid employees, and a ton of other stuff in Northwood Studio. The video was initially well received, but a lot of bigger creators in the Secret Lab sphere made videos disproving the claims he made. Even Hubert himself replied to everything saying it was all false. He would later come out with another video titled, Northwood Allegations Evidence, What It Proves and Why It Won't Matter, which currently has more dislikes than likes. It's around 40 minutes of him talking to his friends about the claims and pretty much saying he doesn't care if he can't prove anything and if people don't believe him. After that video was bombarded with negative reception, he left the Secret Lab community just as quickly as he joined it. Nowadays, he's gone back to making his regular content before the whole Secret Lab drama.
The tutorial class is an unused class in Secret Lab which shares a model with a facility guard but with a pink hue to it. It's often used by server admins or plugins. It was most likely meant to be used for the remove tutorial which taught the player all the basics of Secret Lab. The tutorial is actually extremely funny and even taunts you and exits the game forcefully if you don't follow instructions. Take a look. I just threw you a card somewhere on the floor. Pick it up, try to upgrade it to the highest level. You did something wrong and you burned it. No problem. Take another one. Oh, you did it again. Come on. <sighs> Take the next one. You know what? Maybe I'll give you five key cards for once. Remember, we want the O5 level key card. No ash. <sighs> You're doing it on purpose. Do you think this is funny? You know what I can do and you can't prevent? Quitting the game. Yeah, come back later when you're a little smarter. Before the 106 patch just used to be a tank, he would have huge bullet resistance making it pretty much useless to shoot him, needing to use other means like grenades to contain him, or just using the good old fashioned femur breaker. Unfortunately both his tankiness and the femur breaker were removed and now 106 is pretty much just like every other SCP. This entry refers to the rare reload animation found on the revolver. There's a small chance that the character removes the entire cylinder from the revolver instead of removing the rounds. The Chaos car used to look much different. It used to use a model from a World War II Unity asset called the M3A1 Scout car. It was later replaced by the one we all know and love jumping underneath today. When SCP-939 uses its Amnestic Cloud ability, nearby players lose the ability to reload or even see 939. If you're in the cloud, you can hear someone whispering. Alongside that, depending on if 939 is in the cloud with you or not, it plays different sounds. Take a listen. Quit smoking is an infamous joke most of circulating around Source Engine games such as Counter-Strike or Gmod. Usually someone will tell you to type this phrase into your console and that it'll give some sort of positive effect like removing smoke grenades etc. In actuality, typing in the word quit followed by anything else will exit the game. The same applies to Seeker Lab which is why I think it's on the list. Seeker Lab even displays a goodbye message. Massive Labyrinth is the name of the removed track made by Jacek Fragi Krogal. He used to play when the player was alone for a prolonged period of time. Honestly, I think it was an amazing indicator of time, but also set the mood so well for making you feel extremely uncomfortable and scared when you were alone. I think this is one of the most unique tracks in all Seeker Lab, and I'm really sad to say it was removed. Congeny Server was a very popular Seeker Lab server a couple years ago due to its use of plugins and custom classes. It was loved by many and was considered to be one of the best secret lab servers ever. It was shut down around a year ago after it was exposed that the owner had with children and was Yeah. Moving on. Roasted is an unused achievement which you could get by surviving a hit from a Tesla gate as an SCP. I'm not sure if it was ever in the game, but it's listed as unused on the wiki. I think this entry is referring to Unlimited SCP, another abandoned server that was shut down recently. I've never played on it personally, so all this information is from Reddit comments and things. Apparently, the server had some issues and was quite disliked in some parts of the SL community. The owner of the server didn't want to transfer ownership of the server and decided to just delete it. Nowadays, the server is trying to be revived under the name Chaos Theory. The Logister's red dot site features a QR code on it. Scanning this QR code brings you to a YouTube video of a famous TF2 SFM which has become a pretty big meme. I've already covered most of this with the 106 bullet resistance point so I won't go over it again. But all you need to know is that 106 used to be able to be contained by entering his room with the Keter level access card like the red card. It required two people, one of which would sacrifice themselves and the other would press the recontainment button which would kill 106. As mentioned, this was sadly removed and we can no longer hear the glorious Femur Breaker scream in-game. 
In the Refractory Reality update, on rare occasions, you can find a little rat in the evacuation center room and entrance zone, hidden in different locations. I have no clue if this is an inside joke or what. During the 2020 Halloween event, SCP-018, also known as The Ball, was renamed to Jackie and was remodeled to look like a jack-o'-lantern with facial expressions. Some of the effects and colors were also changed. SCP-096 has an unused grapple animation which looks like this. This may have been an alternate attack method to the AOE slap we have nowadays, but who knows. Before the recent changes to the zombies, which added the ability to eat corpses, etc., zombies used the T-Pose. It quickly became a huge meme of the community and stayed in the game for years. Unfortunately, it was later changed to use normal animations. Before the mimicry update, which reworked SCP-939, there used to be two 939s which could spawn into the game at once. They looked completely different, one of them usually being called Dog and the other Frog, although they both started being called Dog, and the name has stuck ever since. Apparently the reason that there were two dogs was because the team had a miscommunication and made two models instead of one. The ghost light is a throwable item which when thrown into a room turns off the lights and locks all doors. If you throw another one, it'll turn on the lights and reopen the doors. By holding the item in your hand for a prolonged period of time, you can hear whispering coming from the ghost light. This entry refers to the fact that on April Fools a few years back, SCP-999 was confirmed to be dead in the game's universe by Northwood themselves. They even made multiple theories such as it being blown up by dynamite, being crushed to death, or turning evil and dying funnily enough. Jan Kalos, or D55240, is the name of the model used by the D-Class in-game. He's apparently a Czech drug dealer and is responsible for hundreds of deaths. Not many people know that the D-Class model actually has any backstory. Originally, you were meant to choose which character you wanted to play as. There were even female variants of the D-Class that spawned with the Jander card. Today, the only model that remains is that of Jan Kalos. The cafeteria was a cut room found in the entrance zone in earlier versions of the game. It was taken directly from Containment Breach and even features some PNG pizzas on a plate. Evil Candy and other candy suggestions are an old secret lab meme found on the Steam forums. It was suggested by one user to add different types of candies. One of these being Evil Candy, which quote, turns you evil and you die, end quote. There was also supposed to be a brown candy which would make you poop on the floor like 173. Hoodie, a friend of mine, said, if the brown candy does that, then what does the white candy do? The hilarious nature of the suggestions made it into a really popular meme and joke within the staff team too, some which actually considered some of the ideas. And finally, we get to the final entry of level 3. The entry refers to the secret lab ARG that was hosted in late 2019. For this section, I'll be interviewing Chaos Core, one of the participants and winners of the ARG, who has their name on the in-game plaque commemorating the event. So, tell me, how did the ARG all start? Uh, yeah, so, uh, for me, what I remember about the start of the ARG was that it was during one of Northwood's uh, streams. I think it was like a development stream. Uh, effectively, what occurred was that there was a sort of interference, a sort of signal that came through, which I believe was supposedly going to be SCP-079 sort of trying to say something. A uh, bunch of a bunch of sounds that are not really discernible. So uh, I then thought, thought I'd just take a look around and see what it meant, and uh, I ended up finding out that if you put that exact audio into a spectrogram, you get an image of obviously all the frequencies and everything like that. But within that, there is actually a link to a Discord um, put into it as well. So you can't type, like you know copy and paste it, but if you type it out, it gets you to a Discord where I was then greeted with the uh, opening uh, page to everything, where basically I was being told that I'm basically a D-Class and that we are going to await for the day. I'm looking here, at one point you even joined a Minecraft server, right? Yeah, um, I think that was one where a lot of people started to feel a bit strange, I would admit. Um, there was like a weird like parkour element in a Minecraft server to then get a code from a book. So, final question to sort of round it all up is the ending of the ARG. So, 
who exactly found the end and why so if if there were a lot of people who have completed the rg right uh mm -hmm. how many of them were added to the plaque in game and why uh right so the ones that are added to the plaque were the ones that got the roles in the discord uh there were actually a few people like the fit so the people you see on the plaque are likely the ones that either got the greedy victor role, any of the special roles as for solving a test. Those are the ones mm. that got the roles. There were still a bunch of other people in the server that didn't get a role, and so they weren't actually added. So that plaque is much more to designate the people that contributed in some way to the solving. So uh, those who, just because you're a part of the Cypher team or trusted in the community server, that didn't mean you got a moment on the plaque. Uh, thanks for giving your experience and everything like that. I really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, coming along and uh, wasting your time by talking to me. <laughs> uh, don't worry, I'll waste my time for SCP any day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Before version 7.1.0, which added the flashbang, you could obtain smoke grenades. They're exactly as they sound. They created an underwhelming smoke screen when thrown. I'm so glad we have flashbangs and not this. Although, the smoke screen did make a comeback in the form of the fog jars. Apparently, the name of the 3X particle disruptor comes from a Northwood staff member called X3 who came up with the idea for the weapon. Calling it the 3X was just a nice little nod to the person who originally had the idea for it. This entry refers to Lost Media and Secret Labs update logs. When looking at the history of all previous change logs, we see a jump from version 1.1.0 straight to version 3.00, meaning that the change log for version 2.0.0 was either never created or has been lost to time. Blacklisted SCPs refers to a list that Hubert or North would have of all SCPs that will never appear in the game, don't ask why. The list includes SCP-035, The Possessive Mask, which we'll cover more later, SCP-999, The Tickle Monster, SCP-682, The Hard to Destroy Reptile, and finally SCP-067, or Able. None of these SCPs will ever be added to the game, which is understandable, but at least that means there is a chance that Josie the Cat gets added to Secret Lab. Here's hoping. I couldn't find much on any scrapped achievements from the Scopophobia update. Unfortunately, Secret Lab is quite badly documented when it comes to short-lived or scrapped content. I've already mentioned the roasted achievement, so I'll mention the second removed achievement that I could find. It was called Upcoming Star. The description reads, Successfully submitted a score to an SCP SL tournament. I'm not exactly sure what this is referring to, so if you know, leave it in the comments. This issue refers to the fact that throughout the game's lifespan, there have been three separate models for the Epsilon 11 rifle from all three gun periods. The first was the sci-fi period, where the Epsilon looked like this. Next was the Legacy, the classic edition, where it didn't look half bad. And finally, we have post-parabellum Epsilon, which you all know and love today. The Project 90, or P90 for short, was an SMG feature in Secret Lab before the Parabellum update. It had a high rate of fire, but low damage, and was honestly a blast to use and see all the privates blasting the SCP with it. Unfortunately, it was replaced by the Crossback and Parabellum. RIP P90. By going to the operational guide in the main menu and typing in the word redacted on the page of the micro HID, it brings you to a secret page of the 3X particle disruptor instead. Initially, I thought this was referring to the Red Room found in the game, but recently I found that there existed a server called the Red Room. Apparently, a couple years back, the owner of the server, Red, died of a heart attack. His sister notified everyone using his account and even streamed his funeral, apparently. Unfortunately, she couldn't pay for the server, so it was shut down. I never personally played on this server, and it's quite hard to find info on it, so take this with a grain of salt. When in the classic main menu, typing in the Konami code makes your game look pixelated and green, as well as changes the music to sound more retro. Although this easter egg was removed in the newer menus, this track can still be heard if you select the retro menu track in the options. Apparently this entry refers to some old 079 buttons. These were not the game when 079 was extremely early in development before the first version of him got removed, so this info is coming from the creator of the iceberg themselves. 
In the earlier versions of Seeker Lab, 079 was pretty weak. It didn't have the generators or even the AP and EXP systems like we do today. You would have to hack a door, wait for it to be hacked, and then you could operate it. Alongside this, you could literally recontain him instantly by just shooting the monitor in his room. I'm really glad they changed this one. Before we got the main menu we all know today, there was this. A projector screen with all the very basics on it. It was honestly a really unique and quite nice menu and it's a shame they got rid of it, but I can understand why they did it. Today's menu allows for a lot more detail and options to be put into it. But even before that, there was this. Completely in Polish and it was... Uh, yeah, it, it wasn't pretty. The century is referring to the trailers for the Mimicry update, which reworked SCP-939. In the trailers, we see a whiteboard indicating an excavation site near Site-19, which as you remember, is not where Secret Lab takes place, but rather where a containment breach takes place. This theory states that the Foundation was experimenting with samples found near the site and created SCP-939. How it got from Site-19 to be contained at Site-02 is anyone's guess. Leave your theories in the comments if you have any. The USP was a pistol feature before the COM-18 was added to replace it in the Parabellum update. It used to shoot extremely slowly and had a ton of recoil, but would one-shot headshot any human enemies, which made it sort of like the revolver of its time. SCP-294, also known as the coffee machine, once appeared in the removed cafeteria room we mentioned earlier. You could put a coin in it and you'd get a cup in return. It had no other effects and you couldn't select any drinks like in Container Breach or anything like that. It has since been removed. SCP-457, also known as the Burning Man, was a playable SCP in the early pre-release versions of Secret Lab. He didn't have a unique model, using the T-Posing 106 model instead. He was eventually scrapped and as far as I know, he isn't going to make a return anytime soon. This one is a lot farther down the list than the rest of the QR codes because it's pretty much been lost to time. On the official Northwood Studio Twitter, they made a post about introducing SCP-207 the Cola. In the images, we can see a QR code on the back of the bottle. The resolution of the image makes it difficult to scan and it doesn't appear in the game whatsoever. Someone replied to the post saying, the QR code actually spits out a generic website link of some program, not worth it. This reply suggests that it was completely unrelated, which is why it may have been removed, although we aren't completely sure. On the back of the flashbang's texture, there's a US phone number written. You can still actually call this number too. Dialing it reveals this. Yeah, I think that was the most elaborate Rickroll in history. Supposedly when Secret Lab was in early development, any person who contributed money to the game would have their name put into a random room. I'm not exactly sure where the names were or how this whole system worked though. This is only from what I've heard. In the Mimicry trailer, we see on the whiteboard Unknown Sample S1913, and under it, soil sampling indicates presence of unknown substance, further laboratory investigation required. We then see a scientist supposedly investigating this sample, where he finds what appears to be SCP-939's blood cells. I think this indicates that there's a bigger story at play here than what we thought originally. This refers to the fact that the painkiller's model has hidden text saying, it doesn't matter what I write here, it's going to be too small to read anyways, Purple Goop signing out. If you remember, Purple Goop was the winner of the 2018 art competition and now does texture work for Northwood. As I've heard, the origin of the name of the jailbird comes from another Northwood staff member. It's apparently staff member Mikkel's last name translated on Google Translate, which gives the name Jailbird. But like I said, this is only from what I've heard. This refers to the fact that in early versions of the game, the MTF Privates, which were also known as the MTF Cadets before Parabellum, were actually called MTF Guards before Facility Guards themselves were added to the game. This entry, just like the Unknown Sample, goes back to the Mimicry trailer. 
In another shot of the whiteboard, we see a person with the text unidentified individual spotted in close proximity to Site-19 on the day of the event. Who this person is and what the event was is still unclear. The event could be referring to the discovery of the sample or SCP-939 itself. My personal theory is that the person was a spy or saboteur sent by a rivaling faction, such as the Chaos Insurgency. Although, this is all just speculation. Not too sure what this is referring to again, since we've covered both how old 079 worked in terms of recontainment, but also the old intro. I assume this is to do with how they used to have to hack doors to open them, which I've already covered in a previous entry. I think this is referring to how in the older versions of the game, the intercom room was locked even with an 05 card. No clipping into the room, you find some stairs that lead up to what looks like a server room. This room is directly taken from Containment Breach and serves as the power room and entrance zone for giving back remote door access to 079. I believe this refers to how grenades used to function with a radius instead of the hit detection like they do today. No matter if you were behind something or not, you'd get flashed if you were near it. I honestly think this entry shouldn't be this far down, but I guess it is a really old feature after all. And finally, the best for last. I originally believed the century referred to SCP-035, which canonically has tendrils. Recently, it came to my attention that the tendrils does not refer to 035 whatsoever. This might actually be the creepiest and deepest entry of this entire iceberg. The tendrils were a massive conspiracy on the Secret Lab Discord server. Apparently, people would find multiple tendrils all across Secret Lab. We even have a few screenshots of these supposed tendrils. Honestly, I don't even know what this could be, and I'll admit it's actually really disturbing. If you have any more information about this, leave it in the comments. And that's it. That's the entire SCP Secret Lab 2023 iceberg. I hope you enjoyed because this video took way too long to make, like weeks. So I'd really appreciate it if you liked or subscribed if you enjoyed. Feel free to leave a comment about any mistakes or anything you'd like to add. Thanks a lot for watching and joining me through this journey. See ya.